Hello everyone. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023 at 1:59 a.m. in the morning. I just got out of the shower and put on completely clean clothes cuz I got tired of being in the same clothes and being in the same I mean, wearing the same clothes and being in the same clothes and just being dirty and having a dirty body. So, finally, I feel better to have, you know, so the out, the dirty clothes that I took off, I'm going to have to wash those. So... With the so-called mental health, I'm, um, you know, taking everything one step at a time, but so I feel a little disappointed because they had somebody on YouTube that I commented on somebody's channel on on one of their community posts I think it was and mentioned about my homeless situation and staying in an extended stay hotel and somebody offered to help me and said that oh what's your um you know how much is it for a night at the hotel and what's your cash at so I said well I'm not sure how much it is per night but I just know, I think they told me it was supposed to be like, I told her 360, but I think the guy said 350, I'm 356,000 such and such amount of cents or whatever. So, um, excuse me. It was like, he said it was supposed to be $350. I mean, I keep on saying it, 300, excuse me, $356, and I don't remember how many cents that is supposed to be. So, um, but I, I don't want to say yet that she stood me up, but maybe she must have immediately logged off after asking me that question, and maybe she might come back later on and see my comment or see my response and maybe help me out with something. I don't know, but I don't want to get discouraged yet and say, well, oh, she stood me up, but I've had quite a bit of people who did that to me. Um, you know, don't, don't, pull somebody's leg and play with them when they're struggling to survive and um you know don't play with somebody when they're struggling to survive and leave them on a wild goose chase so by me I've I've dealt with people who played with me and made false promises like that and left me high and dry and left me stood up but some people might come back way later on and fulfill their promise. <clears throat> but so I didn't really feel like them squeeze my organs tonight when I took a shower, but I felt a little bit of pressure. But, um, at one point, for a brief moment, I felt the vertigo feeling in the shower. <clears throat> like a mild, brief moment, I felt like the vertigo feeling in the shower. So, um, it must be a good thing if I'm getting sleepy right now. Excuse me. Oh. <sighs> So, I had the White Castle for lunch. 
And well, that was breakfast food mixed with lunch food. <laughs> for lunch, a late lunch, like 2 o'clock. And then for dinner, I think it was about 7.30 or 8 o'clock. And I just, I mean, I tried to melt the peanut, the last of the peanut butter from Trader Joe's all that time. I tried to melt the last of the peanut butter in the microwave, but it, I put it in for two minutes. Maybe it might've been too much, but I, I put it in for two minutes and it started to scorch. I mean, it, it was, you know, kind of scorched and burned. Ah, uh, that must be a powerful microwave. But, um, I feel like I kind of hate, hate, hate myself for doing that, but it wasn't that much peanut butter, but I didn't have like a metal spoon to be more effective at scooping the peanut butter out. So I thought, well, if I put it in a microwave and melt it a little bit, <clears throat> then it can be easier to pour out and, but it didn't work like that, you know? So I just had some, um, the last of the oatmeal. And um, I put coconut oil, like two tablespoons of coconut oil, and a, some of the um, Himalayan pink salt. And that might be why I'm sleepy now. And um, I also put um, two tablespoons of honey, the raw honey in it, and, um, you know, stirred it up together and... Did I have milk with it? Yeah, I had some. I think I had some milk with it too, like as if it was breakfast. And then I had some um a a bowl as big as I could of broccoli. And I was still hungry, so <clears throat> all I was able to do was um I try to call this pizza place that had an advertisement like flyers downstairs in the lobby but every time I try to call it said no response and time out or something weird or it would ring once and then hang up and I you know but I maybe I don't, I don't know what why why I couldn't um but I was trying to order like a um one topping pizza for 7.99 and I didn't know if they delivered or or what <laughs> but um, but I couldn't even get through to them and I didn't realize they were 10 miles away. So I just went to the snack machine cause I was determined to not step foot off this property today because <clears throat> I'm just not mentally ready to go back and I'm still, after three weeks, not mentally ready to go back out and face the public, face society, and deal with the gang stalk. And I still feel psychologically, mentally, and emotionally weak. I don't feel mentally strong enough. So, um... <clears throat> So, I mean, but I'm, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't feel mentally strong enough to, um, I don't feel mentally strong enough to go and, um, you know, even just to go around the corner and they got, dozens of um food places that's walking distance <clears throat> and but I mean they got all these restaurants and fast food and everything but really no grocery stores around here but all these fast food and um I don't they, they don't even have a Walgreens or Walmart or CVS or nothing over here but I feel like, I, I mean, I wouldn't even want to go 200 feet or 300 feet. Or I wouldn't even want to just go right next door and go get anything to eat. 
because I mean I, I, I just trying to take a break away from I mean being antagonized by the perps but it had been 24 hours and the perps are probably doing stuff behind the scenes but other than noise here and there, um, if I didn't order the food and didn't go downstairs, then I probably could have said that I had a 96% perp free day. But I'll say that you know, I, I kind of feel like that was a big perp thing that they that the staff did downstairs. So, I'll say that um, that was like fifteen percent, and then I'll say another five percent with the noise. No, I'll be no. I'll say that um. No, I'll say that they. T- did 10% and then the noise 5% and then when I went to the snack machine they had these perps um the guy was wearing a white shirt and I forgot what kind of pants he was wearing but his girlfriend wife or whatever she was wearing like she she was wearing a blue hoodie or something and lighter blue jeans and red red shoes but they didn't tell me nothing but you you you, y'all wait till i go to the snack machine and act like y'all come to do laundry force me to see y'all ugly faces y'all ugly dirty rotten faces so so online I had a perp free day. Online I had a perp free day. But in person it was just a little bit minor stuff. But I don't know what what would it take for me to get to go for like a twenty four hours with no perp activity at all. I mean the fake Darnell Williams perp didn't mess with me today. Well, I'm going to say yesterday, the 22nd. So, um, that's good news. But on Tuesday, he wouldn't leave me alone. But he, he, he knows what he's doing, but he likes to pretend like he's mentally off, slow, and retarded. But one moment, he'll try to talk and act like, I think he got multiple personalities or something. So, um, <clears throat> so I went to the snack machine and got four snacks. And that snack machine is expensive. Two dollars per snack, but it was still been ch- cheaper than um. Excuse me, it was still would have been cheaper than eating a doggone sandwich from fast food or something. But so for dinner, I had chips and cookies. Excuse me, chips, cookies, broccoli, and oatmeal. And I'm surprised that I didn't have a weak feeling. And I had to start medicating my body with the bentonite clay because the monthly, the woman's monthly visitors can come any day soon. And I hate to have to be back on the street suffering that and my clothes getting messy and dirty and bloody. And yeah, I'm going to say it because you online perps. You you want to force me on the doggone streets. <clears throat> so um. <clears throat> so 
So, I mean, it's like, well, I guess tomorrow, I, I mean, I, I know my body will, well, later on today, I know my body will end up feeling like shit to have a cinnamon roll and chips and call it breakfast. I mean, maybe cinnamon roll, chips, and fruit, that frozen fruit. And then having chips and broccoli. I I mean, I'm sorry, that small thing of mac and cheese and broccoli and call it dinner. I mean, I know I'm, I know I'm going to end up, my body's going to end up feeling like trash, you know, but then tomorrow's Friday. I don't even know if I get help with much of anything. So, um, it would cost me $4 to get, um, you know, to wash the other clothes. And then after that, I will have enough for another day pass or something like another I mean just for one day pass and then Friday I mean I might be able to eat a little something but I won't be able to have any anything like later on today and Friday I won't have any meat to any way to have meat to eat and so I might have to deal with my body feeling weak and stuff like that so um Yeah. So um um I mean I was trying to ask for help with I mean I know within twenty four hours people ain't gonna help me because I I mean I haven't had much of nothing. You know, I've been trying to ask since Monday trying to ask for help maybe for this week so that online perp that falsely said that I incriminated myself in my videos and all you do is threaten to tell social security well okay if I incriminated myself how call Cincinnati Ohio police and show them my videos and see if I go to jail. I bet you you won't do it. Call the Ohio police. I mean, cyber begging is not a crime. Cyber panhandling is not a crime. To ask for help to stay out of tornadoes and rainy weather and all that when they don't have much or nothing and the system makes it so hard I mean like as I said that's a fake mental health thing anyway I mean a mental health agency like this coming Friday and over the weekend the weather's supposed to be bad and I think even later on today the weather is supposed to be pretty bad too So, you know, I was trying to get help for another week with the weather being bad. And then next week is supposed to be in the doggone 30s. But if they wouldn't have perked me out of this place and that place, then in Pensacola, then as I said, I could have been still sleeping by 25 West Government Street and also, um, taking showers at UWF campus and maybe not even having to ask for money for food. Maybe not even having to ask for money for food. Maybe not until like the 23rd, 4th, 5th of the month or all the way until I get the 3rd of the month check. But, um, 
how the hell is somebody supposed to survive off of, you know, nowadays, even with inflation and all that, how is somebody supposed to survive off of way less than a thousand dollars a month? You're not surviving off that much, but y'all really, as I said, y'all call gang stalking real work. Gang, st- let's talk about gang stalking being a fraud. How about you turn your you turn yourself in as a stalker? Turn yourself in to in. I mean, go turn yourself in as a criminal stalker, participating in infraguard, in MK Ultra, and satanic ritual abuse, and sex trafficking. Turn yourself in for conspiracy to murder. And you don't even know me. I never did you anything. You think you're so tough, but you're hiding behind a computer screen. You're a man. You're not even a woman. And you and you trying to you a man cyberbullying a woman. And won't even show your name or face. Now, if you were really tough, you would show your name and face. <clears throat> and, and, and it's like the gang stalking men are more cowardly than the woman. I mean, the women. The women are more bold than the men. Ain't that something? So like the narcissistic men act effeminate from what I heard a lot of people say. And and then the narcissistic women try to be masculine and hard. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess me waking up so late or having a weird sleep schedule is the reason why I um, felt like as if I had short hours of the day and didn't really get to accomplish writing another short story or any more short stories. And the fact that I'm not able to get that much you know, rec- recognition or make any money off of it or making a living off of it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to not feel discouraged or give up. But it seems like more people are starting to press the like button on my short stories when I put it in a community post. But I did put it in a video about um, the homeless no more short story and I'm surprised that I got 10 thumbs up in that video and I was surprised that was the most thumbs up I ever got in a video version of a short story any of the short stories I ever wrote so some people are liking my short stories or whatever you know but um, the online perps would be so jealous and then they'd be like um, no, they're not giving you thumbs up because they like it. They're giving you thumbs up because they feel pity and they feel sorry for your dumb ass. That's how they talk. <clears throat> so, um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm, I was surprised. So I am an author, and as I said, how do I not have a right to get paid to write and make a living off of it? And then, you know, doing a, going to physically to a job where other people tell you what to do, that's why people aren't happy. That's why people are, are miserable. And I said that, People should be able to live life happy and people should be able to live where 
people should live and work wearing however they want as long as they're not hurting anybody. I think that everybody should be able to pursue what they want in life as far as work and living goes. I mean, not exactly. I mean, as long as it falls in, in place with, um, you know, pleasing God. So, I mean, if you, you feel like being a welder makes you happy and a skill you wish you can learn, I think you should be able to pursue that if if that's what you want in life. But, I mean, if you wanted a career in welding, but the most you can get is a construction job, I know you ain't going to be happy. Or, I mean... I heard that a lot of times some famous celebrities who sold out, you're given the illusion to believe and they are brainwashed with the illusion by handlers trying to control them like total puppets on a string. The celebrity themselves um, are brainwashed to believe that this is what they always wanted. But now they've been brainwashed and groomed to believe that's not their independent thoughts to believe that oh I always wanted to be a singer or I always wanted to be an actor or I always wanted to do modeling <clears throat> but if they had handlers that groomed them from babies or from out of the womb and then de- them being satanically ritually abused and excuse me and MK Ultra and all that they didn't ask for that and some people really break do break away from um i mean sometimes they do get to break away from you know if if your parents force you or push you to be um a famous basketball in NBA basketball player if they groom you to be that but that's not really what you wanted to do <clears throat> and if you just wanted to live a regular life but narcs in your life trying to force or control what your life should be if you grow up and you feel like you wanted to live in um San Fernando, I mean San Fernando Valley, California. You want you may have wanted to live there, but you sitting here, you know, unhappy with living in Duluth, Minnesota or something. So um or I feel like if somebody wished to travel the world, they should be able to pursue that too. I, for many years, I mean, I felt like I wanted to travel to different countries. And I wish that I could have been like a, and I say it all the time, I wish that I could have been like a um, successful travel and food blogger um, not just with food, but <clears throat> it, I mean, I don't even know if I can pull it off to be like a um a nature blogger or something like that. I mean, a travel and nature blogger. Say, for example, if I mean, I never went hiking, hiking before or camping like that. You know, but um, like hiking in the mountains, I never really experienced that. Or camping, no, and I never really, I mean, I, I never really lived out in the woods or been in the woods. I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I ever been in the woods like that. You know, but um, and I don't know where to go in the woods. 
it would be scary because I learned some things about survival and prepping, but have nothing to show and don't know how to put it, put those skills to use. And I haven't been, had the opportunity, but I tried to practice with, um, prepping and, um, but it seemed like a lot of the people in the prepping, so-called prepper community, um, they're narcissistic with elitist mentality and act like as if they look down on poor and homeless people. And if you're a prepper, you I mean, you ought to know if you are a New World Order awakened and a prepper, then you ought to know how challenging it is, you know, trying to, I mean, I, I mean, it's like, I don't even, I feel stuck myself because I don't have a vehicle. I don't have a house. <clears throat> and if they um own a house or own a homestead and they show about the videos about canning and preserving and raising chickens, raising goats and um growing fruits and vegetables and um So, I guess they make their money from YouTube videos, but and and then they sell merchandise and they have a lot of supporters. But I mean, I'm stuck in this homeless situation. But this video is all. I mean, this um channel is finally and already monetized, but. I'm o- I'm only probably gonna get crumbs, <laughs> probably only only gonna get crumbs, you know, because every a lot of people are encouraging everybody, you know, diversify your income, get your YouTube channel and get it monetized. It took a few years to get this monetized. I've been having this channel for seven years, <clears throat> but. <clears throat> My first Psych World channel, you know that, wait, hold on, that channel targeted by the Psych World backup, I think it was 2007 or 2008 when I started doing videos and just doing random stupid stuff, and I didn't know about targeting at the time, I didn't know the truth about anything at the time, but I had to deal with a lot of abusive, rude people. Um, I feel bad because I wish I would have known then what I know now that in 2007, <clears throat> I didn't know that I could have self-published ebooks on Amazon and posted them, posted the links on MySpace and been making a living making some extra money like that. I mean, I just didn't know why it's like I was blinded to, you know, alternative ways to live. I'm sitting here thinking that all I knew was that I had to depend on another person to give me a job and couldn't get a job anywhere. <clears throat> I didn't have a car, but I had a place to live. I wasn't homeless in 2008. But I didn't even know that people were making money on their own and making a living with monetizing. I mean, I didn't even know such thing existed. I didn't know about, even like 2012, 2013, I didn't find out about PayPal until later on. I didn't, I mean, I just kind of recently found out about Cash App and Venmo and Zelle and all those. And I'm like... I didn't even know TikTok was around, I guess, in 2017, 18 or whatever. I just found out about TikTok like a year or two ago, maybe, but I never <clears throat> really got into it. Like, But I, I said I was, wasn't going to do Snapchat, and guess what? I don't even hear people talking about Snapchat anymore. And people were always talking about FaceTime. Well, I don't think FaceTime is social media. I guess it's like a modern day Skype. 
But now I'm hearing about WhatsApp. But some too much scam and spam with WhatsApp. But yeah, I did not know that I could have self-published fiction and um cooking. Um I always wanted to write and publish a cookbook. And since I couldn't open a restaurant, I figured if I can experiment with my own casseroles on my own, I don't want to steal nobody else's idea. I want to do it on my own. Casseroles, soups, maybe stews as well. <clears throat> and casseroles, soups, and breads and desserts. And maybe some breakfast items, like even breakfast casseroles. <clears throat> you know, trying to be creative and um and so I mean you might think something tastes I mean that something look nasty, but it might taste good. Like a lot of times a lot of soup and stew you might think it look nasty anyway, <laughs> but tastes good. Or you might think a certain food looks bomb, but then when you eat it, it like ain't got no flavor. <clears throat> so, um, I've had trial and error with cooking, and um, <clears throat> I'm satisfied with my palate, I guess. Satisfied the majority of the time. <clears throat> I'll say like mm, about 95. Four percent of the time, I'll be pretty pretty satisfied with um, you know, my cooking or preparing food. <clears throat> but I remember in two thousand six, after Hurricane Katrina, and I made a tuna soup with lobster bisque. And I don't even remember all the ingredients, but everybody went wild over it. And I don't even remember what the um, ingredients were. But when I was living in Greenville, South Carolina, I made a crock pot dish that I cannot remember at all what I put in it. But everybody went wild over it. Um, and I, that time I, you know, I try to use natural ingredients, but you know, I have a few moments when people really like my food <clears throat> and I have moments where people decide it was nasty before they can even look at it. Cause they don't like me as a person. So, I mean, if they be fake and your own family members being fake and like take one or two bites and sneak behind your back and throw the food away. Because they they have an issue with you, not that your food is nasty. Or because they're undercover fake mad at you, pretend to be fake mad at you for whatever reason. And without you even knowing. And, and then you think everything is fine, but they're moving funny and acting weird for no reason without cause. And, you know, excuse me. So um, I remember when I was a little kid. And I saw this cookbook. I don't even remember the name of it. But um, they had a lot of interesting. Um, it was categorized with desserts, dinners, breakfast, whatever. And I vividly remember it was these kind of. Um, chocolate chip cookies but sour cream was used as an ingredient in the cookies but I wouldn't even touch sour cream but a lot of people say that they go nuts over um sour cream pound cake I can't stand whipped cream or sour cream but if it's baked in a pound cake I think it would taste good but um But, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> but I feel like 
being overly sheltered and just kept ignorant and blind to everything. I feel like disappointed and depressed that I missed out on so much in life. And I wish I would have known then what I know now. And in 2007, I think I tried to tell y'all this before, that I tried to see about Social Security and the PASS program where you can um, run your own business and Social Security supposed to help you with a way to run your own business. But I guess they did away with that. But I try to ask questions on Yahoo Answers and got a, like a lot of abusive, narcissistic, rude people. Um, like they will always answer rude and make me feel bad whenever I try to ask questions, especially in the people with disabilities section. And it's like, why are they so brutal? So I thought about opening up a restaurant and then I thought about, well, what if I were to do a food truck? But both of those might be too overwhelming and high maintenance for me. But I would love to just experiment in the kitchen with, um, you know, my own unique and different recipes and, um, I mean, if if I can have, instead of a restaurant or a food truck, if I can just, you know, have a cookbook or, you know, a cookbook with recipes, no matter how crazy and how simple, I mean, and I even thought of when I was living in Los Angeles, but see, I thought that you had to, like, just like with the jobs and employment, I thought I had to wait around for somebody to hire me. I thought that you had to go to a publisher, but I didn't realize, and I and I used to hear back then about self-publishing, with whatever, and it's like, com or whatever, but... Um, it's like, well, now things, times have changed and I just, I mean, I, I didn't realize I could have, you know, just write goofy short stories on the, um, on a blog or something like that. But my own family would have, um, stopped that mission or stopped that operation and, by the smear campaigns and telling everybody, oh, look at her, she's writing crazy talk, or or um, they might say, oh, don't help her, or don't support her, and stuff like that. And so then, without realizing what was going on, I probably would have had an emotional meltdown and had a mental health crisis if Mark would have um, made comments on my, on my MySpace blog and said something ignorant. Or the or anybody from the foster family or something, but they did they did not want me to succeed at all. But it's like I'm being held back and stuck, and it's like, dang! I just wish I had it. I wish I had, you know, right here. I don't think I don't think I can make instant money from from you know clicking videos or. And I have, I I don't have any skill with editing videos, especially from a phone, an Android, a cheaper Android phone. I don't know how to edit videos and shorten it to, you know, so, um, and then me being targeted, if I try to do a YouTube video with cooking, then I might have to be disrupted with perps and noise campaigns and noise harassment. You know, and so I try to do stuff like do a live stream video and and reading out loud my short stories and everybody's acting like they want to seem bored or uninterested and 
didn't really say much or nothing the whole time, but the only people saying stuff was perps, and I had to keep blocking them. So, I mean, I know lasagna is just called lasagna, but um, it's not called any, like lasagna is called lasagna, and shepherd's pie is called shepherd's pie, but they're not called like a XYZ casserole. <clears throat> but I've made some weird dishes that I can't even remember now. When I was younger, even, you know, low income, disabled on food stamps, trying to survive. I've made weird dishes with with the food I that I had and you know like I know that this is the only time in my life I end up trying this <clears throat> if I end up having something like um for example like just for example if I might end up having ramen noodles, make a soup or something with ramen noodles and chicken and peas or something like that. And I'd be like, well, I don't know if I ever have this again <laughs> or something, you know, but, um, but I think I used to do stuff like have ramen noodles, American cheese. I mean, ramen noodles with the packet and American cheese, like beef noodles, better to have beef noodles than chicken. You know, an American cheese and tuna, like a can of tuna and some peas and make a little casserole out of that. And for me, it tastes good, but... um. I might, I, with, with the noodles, you know, it's bad. So I end up probably having heartburn, acid reflux. Can't, it's, can't even eat noodles, really. It'll make my body feel like shit. So I counted that I have 93 cents in coins, no paper dollars. And I might have eleven dollars in the bank. And excuse me. I might have eleven dollars in the bank. I haven't checked. But um and then as I said, I gotta use that for to wash the other clothes and for a day pass and then having no money for food but so now I have one small container of the mac and cheese and uh, excuse me and now I now have the broccoli and I have the frozen berries and one um, piece of pita bread left. And um, those couple of snacks and a couple of other things. So... This, whoa, hold up. <clears throat> so, I mean, and then it's torture to try to work a job while being hit with weapons and forced sleep deprived. 
and everything. And then even having to work while you got severe vertigo. So from October 2014 all the way through February 2015, can y'all imagine like from late October to, through early February having vertigo every night, nauseating vertigo every night. And I thought that taking the food grade diatomaceous earth was the cause. But people were saying, no, that's not the cause. So if the DE wasn't the cause, then, I mean, because it was the first time I took the diatomaceous earth, and everybody said how healthy it was, and that it kills parasites, and that it make your hair and nails grow faster, and and that it detox your body and everything. But the first time I took a some DE diatomaceous earth, um, I thought I was going to die. And so I in like almost immediately after taking it, I felt the worst of vertigo and nausea and couldn't keep balance at all and was vomiting water and then I mean I couldn't keep anything down and then I tried to take activated charcoals I could activated charcoal because I wondered if I poisoned myself because <coughs> everybody else was talking about how healing it was and everything and so then I finally I took I mean I took some activated charcoal I mean, mixed act activated charcoal water and was even throwing that up. And so I thought I was, I thought that I poisoned myself and I thought I was going to die. And the LA, the Los Angeles um, paramedics, they didn't take me seriously at all and thought I was fine, you know. And then they acted like they wanted to offer me to go to the mental hospital or something or something like they always do that shit. <clears throat> so um, I didn't realize that was part of the gang stalking too. But some moments, if I would take, I try to give DE another chance, and everybody swear by how healthy it is or whatever. And so I use DE externally to get rid of um bed bugs and it took a while it took a few days but it worked <clears throat> but when i was in greenville south carolina off and on i would take the de or i would take the bentonite clay and um but the only one time after a while i tried to um the the DE and it would end up um <clears throat> and I and I know it was it was food grade you know and so I um it made me nauseous or I didn't throw up th th that time a couple of years later but <clears throat> but I mean I um I did feel th the dizziness but so if the diatomaceous earth wasn't the problem then if they might have been hitting me with weapons that bad that I yeah I experienced vertigo for months and I even tried to go see that see a primary care doctor and she was that Egyptian lady that was abusive and rude <clears throat> and she prescribed me meclizine and it didn't help and so I just had to to um. I mean, and then they had this um purple medicine, purple cough medicine or something like that. And I don't even know if any of those were related to why my body started vibrating later on. 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting that mixed up with another time. But, um, you know, I think it was another time I was, I don't remember what year it was. I saw that Egyptian primary care doctor and she was an abusive rude perp too. <clears throat> and I told her about my organ squeezing and she, and she said, well, you need to lose weight. Stop eating all that bread. Stop eating all those hamburgers. And she treated me extra rude, but was nice and kissing the, the illegal Mexicans, nice and kissing their asses and smiling in their face and joking with them and everything. And fraudulently and illegally speaking fluent Spanish and everything. Egyptian and delusionally believe she's Spanish and worship Spanish. But she was all rude and everything like that. Yeah, I think that I think that was in 2014. Oh, was it 2015? I don't remember, but um, it could have been in 2015. But that lady was a perp, and um, I think the organ squishing started in 2012 or 2013, but. I don't even know if I was being hit with weapons back as far as 2001 and 2002 because um, I think I used to have something similar and I was not even near as fat as I am now. And I used to get falsely accused of faking sickness for attention. Yeah, I would have just random cramps stomach pain out of nowhere like as if um like a like as if they were squeezing my organs and I don't I mean some people say that I've seen some people say that they've been hit with weapons since the 70s and 80s and stuff or some people say that they've been hit with weapons since the fifth or targeted since the 50s <clears throat> so um I Yeah, I've been way skinnier than this, like 192 pounds, and ex still experience at random moments to feel like they're squishing my organs or whatever. So, um, it's 2.56 in the morning right now, and I'm getting really sleepy. So... From the way things are looking, I might have to end up back on the streets on Friday with no money for food and trying to panhandle downtown Cincinnati. It's impossible. Can't do it. So, um... I had so many rude people in Pensacola, but they're worse here in Cincinnati. I can't do it. So, um, it's harder to survive. They ran me out of Pensacola and forced me somewhere where it's cold. And if I were to get a job and being homeless on the streets and struggling... I don't have it like I had it in Pensacola to have somewhere where I can take a shower, you know, trouble free. Because, you know, at the homeless shelters, can't go there. But day center and all that, I um, I know that they wouldn't accommodate somebody um, who needs ex extra time. You know, they have, like, they'll, I mean, I cannot do a five-minute shower. And especially, um, you know, I really cannot do, like, a three- or five-minute shower. <clears throat> so, I mean, at homeless day centers and shelters, I told y'all about how... The moment I would close the door behind myself, they would bam on the door and falsely accuse me of taking it too long. But 
right after I closed the door behind myself, and that's part of the, the abusive narcissistic gang stalking as well. Um, but I'm not, I wouldn't take a whole hour in the shower and maybe not even 45 minutes, but I guess on average, I probably take, depending on my hair length, really, <clears throat> but I, my showers, if my hair is like this or longer, the showers be on average 30 minutes. And it also depends on how clean or how dirty the shower is, you know. But um, I have, like, OCD and also, you know, other disabilities and can't, um, you know, can't really take um, <clears throat> showers at the day center and I mean, cause then I'll be in there forever and get, and then them rushing me and make me clumsier and more nervous. And then like continuing to do freaking ritual OCD ritual or whatever of like forever cleaning. But, but the, the gang stalking thing is they were, um, the moment I closed the door behind me, within a couple of seconds, they falsely accused me of being it, taking too long in there. And I'm like, y'all playing games because I just walked in here. <clears throat> so even in New Orleans at the Salvation Army, I would get ganged up on and bullied with the shower thing and you know, it's like I even like traumatized and had PTSD and everything like that. I mean, I hate being forced in this situation by cruel people. I mean, why would you force somebody to be in a traumatized and more uncomfortable, torturous situation? And then you're not, also another thing, at the homeless day centers or whatever, like I did a short story, you're not guaranteed laundry every day, and you're not guaranteed a shower. And like the same reason, like the same reason why I would avoid um, homeless soup kitchens and didn't feel like fighting with people. I'd be trying to avoid the homeless day center because I don't feel like fighting with people. <clears throat> you know, I hate I hate that they even forced me forced me in this situation that um that they per the perps ran me off my Section Eight housing. And run me off from everywhere I try to live. And they're trying to run me off from here. And, you know, so. <clears throat> and then dealing with, like, panic attacks and stuff. I mean, <clears throat> it's fucked up. As I said, I shouldn't have to be homeless. I shouldn't have to, if I do get housed, I shouldn't have to live someplace where I got to live with other people. I mean, I should be able to get to have my own place to live independently by myself. And they're blocking that. They're blocking it. And, um... It's like cer certain people's disabilities might require them to function better alone. So, um, last, I mean, yesterday evening, you know, a few, few hours ago, the people next door 
were blasting TV for a while, and I had to put my earbuds in. But then later on, they turned it off. So I'm glad it's very quiet right now. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, it, it sucks that I can't get to live the way I want to or in a, in a way that makes me happy. And then my twin sister, especially, and other, you know, biological and foster family members and everybody else, like, they make a mockery of me being miserable and not happy, what they caused, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I guess because I'm awake, I don't feel weak and shaky, but I feel like I got the munchies now. But I'm not, I don't, I don't want to eat now. You know, I'm a, just wait till later but so by the time I get out of here on Friday it looked like I'm gonna just have um about five dollars left for bus fare and no no money for food and out there and pouring bad weather and rain or whatever and you know it's scary and hard you know trying to get help if I had a car, it would open up the door to way more job opportunities. Like, so many jobs have turned me down because I don't have a car. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go for now. Please help. I'm trying, I mean, I'm trying to get help for another week plus enough for food and to stay off the streets because next week is going to be cold, alternating between cold and rain. And this weekend, it's like even tomorrow is supposed to be like bad weather <clears throat> and I'm going to end up having really no money or food until unless I get help <clears throat> but having really no money or food until um the week after next which is um April 3rd And so, like, the past, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know, but past, I mean, for a while, I've been, every time I try to plan to go get the taxes done, I, I know I'm not going to get a whole lot back, but um, I'm, it's like, every time I try to go to get the taxes done, it's like the weather be like 19 degrees or 26 degrees or too cold <clears throat> so i'm gonna go for now i got the information in the description box on ways y'all can help me and i would i mean i wish i did have help to stay here another week and and th the system is that they're the ones who want the three and a half times the rent and my income ain't high enough and that's what's keeping me homeless and they got this weird ass system that that's strategically and by design keeping everybody homeless and poor while sending aid to other countries so thanks for listening to me i'll see y'all in a while <clears throat>